Hello and welcome to the first video in a new short little series. Now in these two or three videos what we're going to do is take all of these individual components and turn it into a flying wing. Now a flying wing is probably my single favourite flying device on the planet because it's super simple, very easy to set up, they're pretty bulletproof and dead easy to repair if you've got a bit of hot glue and a bit of tape and they'll do everything from gentle flying to crazy aerobatics and with smaller wings like this they're very transportable too. Now I've made a couple for friends and what I thought I'd do for this one is I'd actually document the process and the way I'm going to go through these two or three videos is to go through it in steps that somebody that has never built a plane before will be able to follow. Now what I'm going to do in these two or three videos is just like all of my building for beginners series I'm going to treat the topic as though it's something that you've never done before. So if you've already built these kind of things on your own then this probably isn't the series for you. But if you're into radio control and you've maybe had a model or two and you're interested in maybe trying out a wing then in the next two or three videos I'm going to go through all the basics at a level that hopefully you'll be able to understand. Now the first video that we're actually watching right now, I'm going to go through two things. First of all, the components that you're going to need, and then we'll also put this wing together in a very basic way. Once we've got that, in the next video, we'll come back and we'll talk about setting up the radio, and we'll also do the ends of the wiring as well. And once we're happy with that point, then the final video, I'll give you tips and tricks for getting this thing flying and getting it flying well. So before we get into too much detail, let me go through all the components in here. Now I'll provide links for the pieces that we have here underneath, but you know what? We have loads of different kinds of wings and there are many more on the market appearing all the time. Because they are so easy and simple to set up, they're also quite easy to make if you have your own foam and a hot wire, you can actually create them. But they're very, very inexpensive now. So what I'm going to do is go through each of the pieces in here and show you what we've got and then we'll stick the wing together and I'll show you how I've installed things like the servos before the next video. So let me take all this stuff out of the box and then what we'll do is we'll bring it all back in. The obligatory manuals. There we go. Let's get rid of the box so we can see what we're looking at. So the first thing we need of course is a wing. Now they come in lots of various shapes and sizes. This is a 600 millimeter wing, so it's 600 millimeters from side to side. This is very typical of how these things come. You have to glue them together and there's usually some kind of little bits that go on the end as well. Uh, there's usually some kind of carbon spars or rods that you put through the middle. And the way I tend to glue this thing together is using epoxy. Uh, so something like uh, the Gorilla Glue or Araldite, something like that is perfect for these kind of things. You can use hot glue if you really want to, but personally I like the additional strength and solid adhesion that you get with something like an epoxy glue. So that's the first thing. This one just happens to come from Banggood, but you can get them from loads of different places. This one was only about 14 quid, something like that. Uh, so the great thing about these wings is even if you completely destroy them, they're relatively cheap and cheerful. You can just throw the wing away if it's completely unrepairable and move your electronics onto a new one and you're good to go again. As with most listings for these kind of things, if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, it actually gives you an idea of all the other pieces that you need to make this wing fly. Because you've probably noticed, apart from the wing, and we've got the mounts for the motors uh, on here as well. Uh, actually, this one came with a prop, which not all of them do, and some carbon spars and the linkages. And we'll show how that goes together later. Uh, we are going to need some other electrical components. So let me move that out the way for now. Next thing we'll talk about then is we're going to need a couple of servos in the wing to move the control surfaces. Now I tend to use cheap and cheerful servos in my wings just because I don't care if they get broken because as you start to really enjoy the wing you'll do more and more daft daft things with it and eventually you'll break stuff. Now I'm actually using these little things here. These are actually Emacs servos. These are really micro servos. I either use like nine gram servos or five gram servos in most of the wings that I fly with here. But I'm gonna give these little guys a try because this is what recommended. Now this is a cute little digital servo. It should 
give us exactly what we need. It should fit in these wings quite nicely too. If I just have a look at the hole, there's the hole for the servo in the wing. Hopefully you can see that. That should fit beautifully. So we've got two of these. Again, these are really inexpensive little things. So um, to be fair, the servos are the stuff that tends to get broke first on a wing in a crash. So I would definitely make sure that um, if you're going to order and build a wing, you at least order one spare servo because uh, when you do have that inevitable crash, you can get everything flying again. Next thing we need to look at then is an ESC and motor. Now the motor that we're using here is this little dinky thing. Let me actually get this out of the packet. You don't need a massive amount of thrust for these things because they're so small and lightweight. So we're going to use this dinky little motor. Come on camera, keep up. Um, this little thing, um, it doesn't come with any mounting screws, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, so I'm going to have to find some mounting screws because it is going to have to mount to the balsa wood piece that we're going to build in a second. Um, but to be fair, I'm probably going to be able to use some of the servo mounting screws that I'm not going to use in this uh, to mount this onto the bit of balsa wood. This is actually a little DYS unit. It's um, a little 1410 4000 kV unit. Um, if you go and scroll down on the motor that you're looking at, again, you tend to find with most wings that you buy, it will recommend a motor. I've used all kinds of things in the past, and um, for the larger wings, things like multi-copter motors, 2205, 2300s, are absolutely fantastic for things like that. Putting some like a 25 amp speed controller with that kind of motor will give you a very quick little model. But on this one, if you scroll down, you can see here that it's only a little five gram uh, motor. Uh, they don't need to be huge in a wing. And this also helps, there isn't all the same mass when you have a crash that causes the same problem. This little guy needs a four by two or a five by three prop. The prop that comes in the kit, I think it's potentially a little bigger than that. No, that's a five by three. So with this motor, I reckon that'll probably give us about 100 grams of thrust. The entire weight of this thing is probably gonna be around 100 grams when we've got it together. So it should be a nice performing wing. The other thing we need then, of course, is we're gonna need a LiPo battery. The stuff that's recommended for the LiPo battery in this is a little two cell LiPo. Uh, we'll have a look at what we've got, but I reckon kind of a 400 to a 600 battery is going to be perfect for that. So the next thing to talk about is the ESC. This is the ESC that we're using. Again, it's the one that's recommended on the site. Uh, it should be fine for this that little motor. It's a 10 amp speed controller. Again, these things are really, really cheap and cheerful. This one's about four pounds. Um, these don't tend to go wrong and if we mount it in half decent airflow we should be fine. The only thing you need to make sure on a wing is that you have a speed controller that includes a battery eliminator circuit which is probably what that large cap is helping us do as well. Now the reason that we want the battery eliminator circuit as part of the ESC is that not only do we want the ESC to connect to the battery at one end and the little motor at the other end but we also want it to provide the 5 volts that's going to power the receiver and also the servo on the wing as well. So you don't want an opto speed controller or anything fancy, you just want something pretty basic that's going to do the job and that's going to fit on your wing. We are going to need a radio uh, and a radio receiver capable of working with a wing. Now a lot of the older radios had something called delta mixing and uh, we've looked at those kind of things on other radios on the channel uh, so have a look and make sure your radio has that kind of thing something like delta mixing if it has um, then you'll probably be fine the more modern radios actually call it wing and it's called wing and it's dead easy to set up some of the more recent radios that we've had a look at don't have that kind of functionality or features on there and uh, you really also want a radio that has trim tabs around the outside of the controls now we're of course going to add this to our trusted Tyrannus. Um, these are little trim tabs here. You want to make sure that your radio has these because with a wing in particular, you do end up having to trim it just to make sure it's flying perfectly. So do double check your radio has the ability to do either delta mixing, which is where you mix the aileron and elevator together, or it actually has a specific setup for a wing. Now, 
This is the receiver we're going to use. Now I'm going to, I've never used one of these before, so this is going to be exciting. It's called an XMR. It's an FR Sky compatible receiver, and it is really tiny. Look at the size of that little dinky number. Uh, now the receivers can sometimes be a challenge. I've had lots of fun taking the cases off receivers and all kinds of uh, shenanigans. This little guy here, the way it works, is that um, each of the pads it corresponds to a particular channel on the radio. And in the next video we'll get into this and how we're all going to set it up. But it does mean that we are going to have to think about this just a little bit. Um, and if you're using a more traditional receiver that has all of the servo plugs that you just plug this kind of stuff into, then that will be a little bit easier. For this I might have to do some direct soldering and uh, take the my life in my hands. Okay, so those are the individual pieces that we're going to use. So to actually put the wing together is going to be really straightforward. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wing out of the bag. I'm going to use some epoxy to glue it all together. I'm going to put some tape over the leading edges for protection because it's always the front of the wing that tends to take the abuse. I'm going to uh, make sure that the carbon spar is installed. Probably going to push the little servos into the places on the wing. And I'm also going to put this little balsa canopy together with a little bit of super glue and then we'll come back and have a look at that and then we'll be in a position to go into the next video in the series where I actually start configuring the radio and starting to make connections. Here is the wing all together. It didn't take very long at all. The majority of the time is waiting for the glue to set. Now this kind of wing is made of this very kind of waxy foam which actually does work quite well with hot glue. But again, we've used epoxy. So we put some epoxy between the two halves and help them together. The way I tend to do that is I just put tape along the top seam and then fill it all up underneath and then hold the wing on the edge of the table with a little weight and then the weight of the other wing just make sure that the joint stays nice and closed while the epoxy goes off. So that was the middle piece. I've also epoxied in the carbon fibre spar that goes along the bottom here for strength. Most of the wings will have carbon fibre spars along the leading edges. Uh, the other thing I've obviously attached are the winglets at the end. Uh, these are winglets that are on the top and bottom of the wings. I'm not a massive fan of these. You tend to find that these get quite damaged when you're coming into land. I may fly it like this, see how I feel, but there's a very good chance I'll take a craft knife and cut them flush with the bottom surface of the wing. The other thing I've done is while I can, I've made sure that these hinges have been worked quite a lot so that they're very free moving. This is one of the things that uh, I didn't used to do enough when I first started building. Just run your thumbnail along the edge to make sure they're nice and floppy uh, because you're going to want these servos to be in with a chance of being able to move the control surface quickly. The only thing I have done is I've put the servos into their slots and again there are little channels cut for the little wires uh, we'll do all the wiring in the next video uh, the only thing I have done is I've connected them up to a little servo checker and that servo checker has done two things for me first of all is made sure that each of the servos are good before I put a little blob of hot glue to keep them in place uh, there's nothing to screw into so we have to use a little blob of hot glue to kind of keep them in there. And the other thing that it does as well is allow me to set them to the midpoint 1500 and install the horns as near to 90 degrees as possible. Now we'll talk a little bit about wing geometry in a bit, uh, but we've got to put in, you'll see there's a kind of a, hopefully you can see it there, there's a hole at the back that we need to install the servo rods into and we'll come back and do that. Ideally what you want is you want the servo rod and the connector here to be 90 degrees to give you equal throw in each direction but we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video. The only other thing I've done, I've put this pod together just with using thin CA glue, just putting it on the edges and popping it together and I've attached the motor. Now the motor, let me just move the wing because it's making the exposure a bit wacky. Um, I've just connected using two of the spare screws that come as part of the servo connector kit. Um, and that is going to fit on the top. We'll have all the electronics inside this canopy. The battery is going to kind of fit in this spot here. And then we'll have another flying wing. So 
join me in the next video where what we're going to do is we're going to just complete the setup of the wing and do all the wiring and we'll also configure the radio and who knows we might even by the end of that one have chance to give it a quick test flight. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organized set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there, and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.